So I welcome you to the new session of the Fourier Transforms. In this session, we shall be discussing the Fourier Transforms of the derivatives and some of the important results or properties related to the Fourier Transforms of the derivative of the functions. So we have already studied that if we apply the Fourier Transform on the nth derivative of the function, then the result is minus of iota s raised to power n into f of s. So we have already derived this result in the properties of the derivative of the Fourier transforms. So if we apply the Fourier transform on the second order partial derivative of the function, then we have the result that if f is applied on del square u by del x square, so using this identity, we can apply this as if what is where is the power of the derivative. So here we have a second order derivative. So we will have on the right hand side that it is minus iota s for n it is 2. So it is minus iota s square into f of the function. So the function is now in terms of u functions where u is a function of x. So it is written as f of ux. So this is if we solve this equation, we know that iota square is minus of 1. So we get a negative sign into s of square. And for f of u x, we can also write this as u bar. So this is the representation of f of u x. So this was the first property of the Fourier transform of the derivative, that it is f of del square u by del x square is equal to minus of iota s square f of u x, which is equal to minus of s square into u bar. And u bar is the Fourier transform of u with respect to x. Moving to the next Fourier transform of the derivative, we have if we apply the Fourier cosine transform on the first order derivative of the function f of x, we shall have the result that it will be equal to minus of root 2 by pi f0 plus s into Fourier sine transform of the function. Mm -hmm. So on application of the Fourier cosine transform on the first order derivative in the result, we shall have the Fourier sine transform. So this is the beautification of this application. Now we know that the Fourier cosine transform of the function is defined by the equation that it is 0, 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity fx cos of sx into mm -hmm. d of x. So uh, taking the left hand side and applying this definition on the function. Now the function is our derivative that is f dash x. So it is root 2 by pi 0 to infinity instead of f of x. Now we have f dash x. It is f dash x into cos x into dx. So it can be written as root 2 by pi and we have applied now the integration by parts formula. So this can be written as cos of sx into derivative of the function. So f dash x dx is replaced by d of fx and applying the integration by parts. So we get it as fx into cos x where the limits are from zero to infinity. And when we apply the derivative on the cos function, so it is minus of sine of sx into s and minus minus takes a positive sign outside. So we get plus s 0 to infinity fx into sine sx into dx. So now what we find here that this part, this part is nothing but the definition of the Fourier sine transform. So this is written as s times of the Fourier sine transform. And when we apply the limits of 0 to infinity, so we have taken into the consideration that this f of x value will tend to 0 when our x will tend to infinity. So as our x is tending to infinity, we have assumed that the function is tending to 0. And when the cos is tending to 0 or the x is tending to 0, so cos 0 is 1. So we have the function as f of 0. So we have here that it is minus of root 2 by pi f of 0. And for the second part also is root 2 pi pi when associated with this, it goes with the definition of the Fourier sine transform. So the root 2 by pi is incorporated in the Fourier sine transform for the second part of the integral. And for the first part, we have this root 2 by pi factor. So we get the result that Fourier cosine transform of f dash x is nothing but minus of root 2 by pi f of 0 plus s times the Fourier sine transform of the function. But 
we have to always remember to use this condition that we have assumed that our function is tending to zero as x is tending to infinity. If our function is tending to zero, then all the derivatives would be tending to infin uh, zero when the x is tending to infinity. f of x will be zero, f dash x will be zero, f double dash x will be zero as x will tend to infinity. So this uh, assumption has to be remembered while uh, applying the properties of the Fourier transform on the derivative. So moving to the next property, we have that when the Fourier sine transform is applied on the first order derivative of the function, so we get the result that it is fs of f dash x is nothing but minus s times the Fourier cosine transform. In the Fourier cosine transform, we had Fourier sine transform on the right hand side, but when we apply the Fourier sine transform, we get the Fourier cosine transform. So applying the basic definition of the Fourier uh, sine transform to the left hand side, we get here that it is root 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity fx is now replaced by f dash x into sine of sx into dx. Similarly, what we did in the cosine transforms derivation, we clapped this f dash x dx and it write it at d of fx. Now applying the integration by parts, we find this as fx into sine of sx integral 0 to infinity and the derivative of sine of sx is minus s cos sx. So s is outside, so we have 0 to infinity f of x cos sx and clubbing this root 2 by pi with this, so what we get, this is the definition of the Fourier cosine transform. And since we have already made the assumption that when x will tend to infinity, then our f of x will tend to 0. So on the application of the limits to the first part of the integral, on the upper limit infinity, the first part gets 0. And when we apply the lower limit that is 0, the x sine 0 will tend to 0. So therefore, the first part of the integral vanishes for both the limits 0 and infinity. So we have here that it is 0 minus of s times of integral 0 to infinity f of x cos x dx, which is nothing but the definition of the Fourier cosine transform. So we get the result as minus s times Fourier cosine transform of s. So this is our result. So let's see the next property. So the next property is now related to the second order derivative. So we have when we apply the Fourier cosine transform on the second derivative of the function, so we get the result it as minus s square Fourier cosine transform of s minus of root 2 by pi f dash 0. So again applying the definition of the Fourier cosine transform, we have root 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity cos sx. For f double dash x, we are now writing it as d of f dash x. So it is root 2 by pi f dash x into cos x 0 to infinity plus s times integral 0 to infinity f dash x sine of s, s x dx. So again, we have assumed here that our functions or the derivatives are tending to 0 as x is tending to infinity. So on the upper limit, the integral, this quantity is tending to 0. But on the application on the lower limit, when x is tending to 0, we get it here as minus root 2 by pi f dash 0 because cos 0 is 1. And this is nothing but the definition of the Fourier sine transform of f dash x. And we have already just derived the formula for the Fourier sine transform of f dash x, which is equal to minus of s times the Fourier cosine transform. So upon substitution of this result, we get the equation as minus s square Fourier cosine transform minus root 2 by pi f dash of 0. So this is the result for the Fourier cosine transform on the second order derivative of the function applying the Fourier sine transform on the second order derivative of the function. So we will get the result as minus s square Fourier sine transform plus root 2 by pi s times f0. So again applying the Fourier sine transform definition to the left hand side. So we will write this as 0 to infinity sine of sx into d of f dash x. So applying the integration by parts we get f dash x into sine x integral is from the limits are from 0 to infinity minus s integral 0 to infinity f dash x into cos x dx. So again, we have the assumption that f of x and our derivative f dash x will tend to 0 as x is tending to infinity. So upon the upper limit, we get the function as 0. And when we apply the lower limit when x is equal to 0, then the sine of sx will be 0. So the first 
part of the integral gets vanished on the application of the limit. So we are left out with thus the second part of the integral. So this is nothing but the definition of the Fourier cosine transform for the first order derivative. So it is written as minus s into f of c f dash x. So we have the result for the Fourier cosine transform of the f dash x, which is s times of Fourier sine transform minus root 2 by pi f of 0. So we have applied that property. And upon solving, we get the result as minus of s square f of s plus root 2 by pi s of f 0. So you can use all these properties when you solve the partial differential equations, when you apply the Fourier transforms on the partial differential equations. So remember these properties for the applications of these theorem. So let's have a quick recap of the Fourier transforms of the derivative. So the basic definition from which we started was that we have already derived the equation that Fourier transform of the nth order derivative of the function is minus iota s raised to power n into f of s. So when we apply this to the second order partial derivative of the function, so the equation takes the shape of minus s squared u bar, where u bar is nothing but the Fourier transform of u with respect to s. The next property we derived that the Fourier cosine transform on the first order derivative of the function is represented as minus root 2 by pi f0 plus s of fs, means the cosine transform is now changed to the Fourier sine transform. Similarly, if we apply the Fourier sine transform on the function, that is the derivative of the function, we get minus of s into Fourier cosine transform of the function. On the application of the Fourier cosine transform on the second order derivative of the function, we have minus s square Fourier cosine transform minus root 2 by pi first order derivative of the function at x is equal to 0. Similarly, for the Fourier sine transform on the second order derivative of the function, we have minus s square Fourier sine transform plus root 2 by pi s times of f of 0. For all these derivatives, when we apply the Fourier cosine transforms, we have assumed that our functions or the first order derivative, second order derivative, if you go for the higher order derivatives, then all the functions f dash x will tend to zero when x is tending to infinity. Without these assumptions, we cannot define our Fourier cosine or Fourier sine transforms. So do remember these results for the application of the Fourier transform on the partial derivatives of the functions. So thank you and meet you again.